Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now today guys, in this video, I'm in the polytunnel and I'm going to be harvesting seed from one of my epiphyllum plants. And this particular epiphyllum is called Mrs. G. Bohem and it was blooming beautiful in the summer for me. And I love to pollinate flowers and try my luck. Sometimes it's a success, sometimes it's not. As in this case, it was a success. And I have two big, juicy fruits on this epiphyllum, just ready for the harvesting. That's the old flower part there that dies back. And if you want to know how to um, pollinate epiphyllum flowers, then please do check a video I have made on how to pollinate epiphyllum flowers to get seed. And while it's far easier to grow, to propagate epiphyllum from cuttings, because in the springtime when you have to prune these plants back, or if you want to prune them back, they're very easy just to let the, let the cuttings dry for a few days and pot into a sandy, a, a nutrient sandy soil, and they root pretty easy but it is so much fun to grow from seed especially when you pollinate them yourself and as I say explain more in the how to pollinate um, epiphyllum cactus flowers so please do check that video if you want to know how to do it may have to wait now for next year when they're flowering but um, some of these these epiphyllums do sort of flower at this time of year as you can see here I have my absolutely beautiful epiphyllum zigzag um, cactus blooming beautiful there but that's going to be a separate video so do stay tuned for that guys if it's not gone on already gorgeous so if it's flowering at this time of year go ahead and pollinate if not you'll have to wait till the spring but once you pollinate the flowers you'll know if it's a success because that usually the flowers dry back like this and fall off within a few days but if it's pollinated it, they, these will dry back like that and stay on and then a fruit will start to form over the coming weeks and bear in mind that this was probably about six months ago now when I pollinated it and it can take that long for the fruit to be ready. There's really no time scale because sometimes it can take anything from a few weeks to um, a few months, as in this case six months to be fully ready to harvest. And you'll know when they're ready to harvest because the fruit will start, you'll feel it and it will feel very soft and um, almost like a big juicy grape. And as you can see, the, the resemblance to a dragon fruit as well there. Obviously it's a epiphytic cactus, so it is similar. And um, two different sizes, quite interesting there to show you the difference. This one is already starting to go a little bit bad like rotten fruit, so this is way overripe. So this is desperate to be harvested. And this one here is a little bit more firmer, but it's still soft, so this is definitely ready for the picking. And what I'm gonna be doing in this video is harvesting these and um, put them into this bowl here then I'm going to take the fruit into the house I'm going to burst the pods open spread all of the seed and pulp that's inside these fruits onto the paper towel probably leave it for a few hours or it could be even a day or two depending on how long the, the pulp dries and then I'm going to separate the um, the pulp that the seeds from the from the paper towel because the pulp will be dry and the seeds will come away very gently when I when I rub my fingers over them then and they're ready then to sow or store to the following following um, time you're ready to sow the seed and I've promised a few of my subscribers you know who you are um, with these seeds so you do know um, these seeds are all taken now if anybody's asking me I've got a list of subscribers after these um, so they're going to be once it's harvested they're going to be mailed out out to them people waiting for them. So how do you know how do you do it then? Obviously you don't get the scissors and cut it off. As I say, you'll know when it's ready to harvest because it feel nice and squadgy. And also the lovely, some, some of them do go different colors so you can't necessarily say it's gonna be red, but in this case it's red. And what you do is very gently twist like that. You don't need to cut, gently twist. You don't want to harm the, harm the plant and it will come away like that. Look how easy it is to just leave a little, that'll just dry up with no problem. And that's there, the lovely juicy fruit. And yep, all cactus fruit is edible. And I have tried a few epiphyllum uh, fruits before when I've get a bit of the pulp when I've been doing the seed and they do taste delicious, like a bit like dragon fruit actually, nice and uh, sweet. So as I say, that's a bit overripe there, but um, as typical of fruit. And there we go, so that's the first one. That is all the old dried flower head. When, it, when the, the fruit is developing, you can cut this off if you want to, but I sort of leave it on. I think it looks quite cool. And then this one here, again, is a little bit more, a bit more firmer. But you'll know, as I say, if, it's not, if it doesn't come off easily, you know it's not ready to harvest, but this is coming off very easy there as well. 
there we go happy days and what I'm gonna be doing now is bringing these into the house um, breaking breaking these the fruit up which I'm going to show you and um, then separating all of the pulp and the seed onto a paper towel leaving it for a few hours or up to a day or two till the, till the paper towel is totally dry and the pulp is dry and then rubbing my finger over the towel to separate the seeds happy days guys now I'm in the house now I've brought the two juicy seed pods uh, in here and uh, before we go any further, I want to give a very special thank you to my wonderful fiance, Hans, who is behind the camera filming me now, so I've got my hands free. And if you're not familiar with Hans's channel, do go over and subscribe. A family of cats see another beauty's licks up above. <laughs> and um, I changed a plan. I was going to use tissue to um, separate the pulp from the seed. But because this, as you can see, it's like a huge tomato, it's huge. There's going to be a lot of pulp, so I'd have to use a lot of tissue. Um, and in this case here, I've decided to go for a clean tea towel, because this can then go in the wash after. And look at that. A funky cactus one. Can't touch this. <laughs> and uh, putting it on there like that. So if you have a large cactus fruit, you may be better off possibly using a tea towel. Not necessarily a towel that's got loads of them sort of fluffy bits on, because you want something that's going to be easy to remove the pulp. And as I say, once I spread all the pulp across, probably have to leave it for a few hours or until it's dry, and then be able to gently rub it off here. Now, what we're we'll doing here is cutting off the dried up flower, flower part here, which is a, uh, look at that, from the lovely flower. Difference in the size between these two fruits, guys, it's incredible. And I've got little bags here to put the seed in afterwards and then I'm going to label it and put the date I've done them. And uh, first of all, I'm going to do the big one first. As you can see, it's a little bit overripe there. Um, and yes, all cactus fruit, by the way, is edible because I'm often being asked, can you eat the fruit? You can. But in this case, I'm going to be using all the, all the um, fruit then just to, for, for the seed. Well, not the fruit, um, the pulp. <laughs> and what you do to break in, you can cut it with a little, a little clean knife or scalpel. But I'm just going to use my, my fingers here and make sure your hands are absolutely clean so you're not spreading anything onto the seed. Burst it open. Look at that, guys. Oh, wow. And yep, it is just like a dragon fruit and it is very tasty because I've had et epiphyllum fruits before. Just get it out there. As I said, there's a lot of pulp. Look at that guy. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh, and uh, you can actually smell it as well. It is tasty. And there's a little bit of pulp left after. I'll probably eat some of this. Peeling the skin. Look at that seed in there. And then what you want to do then is just spread it out. Literally just put your hands over here. And uh, Although it might stain this tea towel, it doesn't really matter. Maybe not use one of your best. The most important thing is that the tea towel is or the towel, whatever you use to um, separate the pulp, is totally dry. And uh, there you go. You want to separate as much of the pulp from the seed as you can. Um, lovely colour. Look at that, guys. It is so dragon fruit-like, isn't it? And so this one, uh, this particular um, epiphyllum is absolutely gorgeous. It has the lovely flowers on it. And uh, easy enough. That's easy enough just to come away as it is. And then... Take that there, I'll probably eat a bit of that, let's get the one seed off. And as I say, these seeds we've already promised a lot of subscribers already, so if you're thinking, oh, I'd love some of them seeds, sorry, they're all taken, guys. We've got a list for them, a list of people to send them to. And that's it. And because actually, although there's a lot of pulp here, this again can all go. Remove what is easy to remove, and the, the, the seeds that's difficult to uh, remove from the pulp because it's too compact will just dry out. And this is what I'm going to be doing is just spread all this across. I don't need to show the whole the whole thing because it take a while. You just want to make sure you separate as many as possible. And here we go. Hans doing a great job there showing you all the seed. And uh, more pulp here. Again, same thing. Squash it down, spread it across. You see why I used a... Uh, a tea towel, can't you? Rather than tissue, it would have been, would have been a lot. And, uh, say, spread it down. It's easier to do with your hands, but just don't put so much pressure on where you're going to hurt the seeds. The seeds are quite strongly in a nice sort of coated, uh, a coat on them anyway. But you want to make sure that, although you put pressure to separate the seed from the pulp, you don't damage the seeds at the same time. And you can see once it dries, as you can see there, it's just going to come away pretty easy then. So I'm going to do this with the rest of, rest of this one here. 
it's another good. Just get all the all the seeds away from the from the pulp on there. So that's a bit of a time-consuming process. But uh, some people may have different methods, but I'm just showing you the method that I do. And this works very well, very well for me. As I say, some cactus fruits aren't as big as this. And some cactus uh, seed actually comes dry as well in little sort of dry pods where, the, you know, the speed seed just crack the, the pods and the seed just disperses pretty easy. So they don't all come in this juicy fruit. Um, there you go, that's that one there. Just get any more off can go and then here might be the odd little bit of seed I can't waste any of them <laughs> so that's that one done here and to say any of the pulp that's got no seed in or this tiny bit can just come away straight away so I'm going to carry on separating this after then this little one here is only a little one again pop it open like oh like a little tomato <laughs> oh look at oh god it smells gorgeous <sighs> So say only the pulp left I'm going to eat. Oh, juicy. And on here. Separate it down. This one's much smaller, so this would be a lot easier. Wonderful. Look at that, guys. Oh, gorgeous. And the little bit that's left in the shell, again, possibly just to turn it, turn it outside like that. And then just scrape it again like that. Which is amazing, isn't it? And the smell is just beautiful. But I just mentioned that so about eating the fruit is completely edible. But if you're the type of person, you know, if you have been using a lot of chemicals on your on on your plants and particularly on the fruits, if you've had bugs and things like that, I wouldn't advise eating them. You could say, well, fruit you get from the supermarket, it's always got pesticide on anyway. But I just personally wouldn't recommend that if that's the case. But in this case, I haven't with this um, particular cactus, so not a problem there. And uh, there we go. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to carry on using my finger very gently to rub uh, the pulp and the seeds away from each other. And then remove as much as the pulp I can and then leave this then to completely dry so the tea towel is totally dry over the next few hours. And then when it's dry, I'm going to gently loosen the seeds away and then put them into the bags. I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm um, just going to uh, leave it now for a few hours and then show you when it's all dried. Now guys, that's the following day. <laughs> and um, this is all dried down here with all the seeds on. And as I mentioned earlier, you have to make sure that the towel or the paper towel or the tea towel, whatever you're using is completely dry. And then you want to gently loosen up these seeds like that. And you want to make sure that they are completely loosened because it may be impossible to get completely all of the pulp off everyone. But the, the more pulp you can actually remove um, the better because if you sow seeds and it's got bits of pulp on it's possible that you could get fungus into um into the onto the seeds I, I should say and then they could go into the seedlings but pretty much if you if you make sure they're all dry they should stay like that'd be pretty good when you sow them so just gently loosen it up like that and then what i'm going to be doing then i'm going to carry on doing this now rather than show the whole video when they're all dry then i'm going to put them onto the plate and then put them through here and then into, into these little baggies. So I'm um, going to carry on loosening these now then, guys. That's all the seeds all took off the towel. Bit of a time-consuming process, and now I'm sort of gathering them all together. And what I would recommend with these, for this particular type of seed, as you can see, um, although I've removed as much of the pulp off as I possibly can, they are slightly sticky. So when it comes to sowing these, I'm actually going to soak them for a few hours in water first and then I'm going to um, drain the water out through a, probably a muslin cloth um, if you're familiar with that. So the seeds are kept in the muslin cloth and water comes through but just to remove any remaining bits of the pulp that possibly could spread fungus onto the seed, the seed, um, yeah, onto the seed trays. So I've um, got the little baggies here and what I'm going to be doing now is this is always handy. <laughs> and uh, scoop a few through there like that. Three little bags each. And the little scoops work really well so seeds don't go flying everywhere. So that's that. These because we've promised these to a few different people there. So I've got different little bags. And I've labelled the bags as well. Obviously what, what the seeds are and also the date I've harvested them as well. 
and if you're going ahead and sowing seeds straight away after harvesting you don't necessarily have to have to obviously put them in the baggies and label them but as in this case they're going to be sent to people so they're in their little baggies and uh, it's always good to store seeds if you're not sowing straight away in a cool um, cool place away from direct heat and sunshine and you can use paper envelopes as well if you prefer but away from humidity there we go that's the other little one there <laughs> And as I say, because these particular ones, they're a little bit like dragon fruit type of seeds as well. I do recommend, and the people who I'm giving these to, if you're watching this, maybe soak the seeds just first, just for a couple of hours, um, and then run it through probably a muslin cloth just to catch the seeds and make sure the pulp is off before sowing them. There you go, that's the other one. And these two here. Very exciting. And uh, this particular beautiful um, epiphyllum has gorgeous flowers on it, Mrs. G. Bahim. And if you want to know how to grow cactus from seed, then links up above to a video I have made on how to grow cactus from seed. Um, it's always best, if, if you haven't got special grow lights and additional heat, it's always best to sow seeds probably in the early springtime or in the summer. But if you have um, got grow lights, in this case, and you're growing them indoors, you can certainly sow at seeds at any time of year. In fact, sometimes winter can be a good time because by the time they really get established, they're all ready for the spring then. And that's it. Just the last ones here. So guys, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> and if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and succulents, including growing from seed, please do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. Let's get the last of these in here. And as I say, it's always great to grow from seed. And check out the links above. I know some people say that they don't see the links above if they're using a mobile phone. For some reason, the links don't seem to work on a lot of the mobiles. So apologies for that. But if you're watching on a PC, you should see the links. Otherwise, uh, do check out my website. There's, there'll be links to how to grow cacti from seed on there, as well as other little tips. Nearly done. Hans is doing a great job of filming there. <laughs> and there we go, guys. Five bags of seeds. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plants. Power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.